Tony gentlemen, you've been preparing for this for years now. Let me say this to you. You do not stand a chance. You are the best of the best. The other team is favored by 30 goals. And I bet on them for the cover and the over. This would be a beatdown to haunt the dreams of children all over the world. Oh, and by the way, London Donovan asked not to be on this team. Oh, you say, I see you on the pitch. This is gonna be ugly. Oh, yeah, hold on. Ah, Deutschland. Ooh, maybe too much. Ooh, the box score. Beg it? Yes. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple. C's get degrees. Need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power tower for box score. Hello and welcome to the Box Score. I'm Brock in Los Angeles. They are the Danettes out in Milford, Connecticut. Guys, I trust you all had an awesome Father's Day weekend. How did you celebrate the big day? Fritzy, did the Birdman outfit make it all the way to Sunday? It did not. Uh, I kept it on until Friday night. I made sure when I got home that the uh, wife and kids could see it Friday afternoon. Uh, my daughter was at some movie with friends, and uh, I knew she would be freaked out by it, so I just couldn't resist and had to keep it on until she walked in the door and saw me uh, with that on. And then, uh, then the scrubbing process uh, began around 9 o'clock Friday night. Yeah, I, uh, I spent my Father's Day asking for one thing, not to be around my family, and my family granted me that, nice. which I think all fathers know is the <laughs> greatest possible thing. Yeah, I just kind of hung with my son, and uh, it was like everywhere we went, we noticed that it was all dads with their kids, which is an interesting thing because Mother's Day, it's like, no, oh, come on, leave mommy alone, don't worry about it. <laughs> but um, we hung out, we played a lot of soccer. That's about it. Mine was uh, fantastic. It was one of the great days I've ever had. I, I, my wife made me three great meals over the course of the day. She made chocolate cake. My kids like came and played, then they went off and let me watch World Cup all day. It was, it was surreal good. Fritzy, your outfit today was a topic of conversation. Uh, check out those bay shorts along with the free NBC polo and the free Callaway hat, milky white legs. Pauly, why was he the odds on favorite to ditch the jeans first among all the Danettes? It's a good question because the backroom guys, we had a, a debate one day, who's gonna be the first Danette to uh, wear shorts? And they said Fritzy because he usually is and he's not scared to unveil those pasty whites. Uh, Seton rarely goes shorts. I'm kind of like second usually, and McLovin has worn shorts maybe once in seven years. Usually on a lost bet, I'll wear <laughs> shorts. Yeah, so we lose. McLovin, does it make you more uncomfortable knowing that uh, there's less material between you and him and an increased chance of a wardrobe malfunction? No, Brock, it doesn't make me uncomfortable to sit within six inches of a man who talks about lotion once a day at least. Uh, and I see what's on his screen, yeah. so yeah, there definitely could be could be some uncomfortable, like, planes, trains, and yeah, automobiles kind spot. of country. He, he, McLovin's in a tough spot. He should get some kind of bonus on, uh, especially on short stays over Ooh, the summer. Bonus. That's some kind of bonus. Bonus. Yeah. Uh, you don't want a pretty <laughs> bonus. Oh, whoa. A, yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> bad, bad position for McLovin there. Oh, my God. Yeah, bonus. No! Oh, I'm wearing knee pads. Just a, <laughs> yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, Polly, Dan said you wouldn't stop texting him about the World Cup this weekend. Are you going to curtail your texting, or does this mean you're just going to text him more? I'm just getting ramped up. This is, you know, we're not even to the knockout round yet. I'm just getting warmed up. Yeah, I just, every four years, I just beat him to death with soccer texts and content, and then I let it go for three years and ten months. It's worked out in the past. Well, it looks like you're trying to bribe the boss because you came bearing gifts today. From USA? Oh, nice. Wow. How about this, Paulie? Yeah. I think you should wear it. Um. Yeah, you're a fan of America. Put it on. Maybe I would after the next break. Okay. Are you gonna wear it? <laughs> you got. You can't just say gonna. You got to say gonna. 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 <laughs> gonna. You gotta just a little. Embarrassing. Andrew, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Are I you gonna I wear said, it? I just heard gonna, that. I, I kind of heard it. Are you gonna wear it? You got the time you said gonna. Are you I gonna, gonna said wear gonna. it? Are you I going think I to said... wear it? <laughs> you know what I was really concerned about there, Brock? Is when I got that jersey, I checked it, and it was XL. And soccer jerseys, the, even though they say XL, are sometimes mediums. 
And if you saw some of the guys this weekend, it was like body paint on some of them. Mm. So I handed the jersey to Dan, and I, would, I did hope he'd wear it, but I was hoping I wouldn't give him a jersey. You've seen some of the shirts he's worn in the past. Yeah, I like that actually we broke with tradition, and instead of putting Patrick across the back, we put at DP Show, <laughs> which is a nice new twist. It's very modern, you know, to sort right of up. connect with social media and what's really happening. Pretty cool. Dan did finally put the jersey on, but it was McLovin that provided the ultimate buzzkill. <laughs> I'm not going to use my hands the rest of the show, guys. Right. Why? Oh. Because I got my... Oh, boy. You just... Oh, boy. Came... Do we need a second it... bucket? Did it come out? Yeah, he cracked it. It's... It came out. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> We just put we, that we just, you know, And it's unfortunate, too, because it took the BRGs about oh, a week and a half to get that in there. I would hardly call that the ultimate buzzkill. I mean, <laughs> we know Dan has an eye for detail, but you play basketball indoor and a lamp hardly. gets jostled. And it's, you know, we could be a show that just says, oh, okay. But, you know, since we're all <laughs> negative and we pick apart things, I guess that's a big deal. So, hey, trust me, the backroom guys, they... They revel in these small projects. They'll turn like they changing a light bulb into a nine-man operation. Yeah, it is still true. Like, it does take an alarming amount <laughs> yeah. of people Special to do simple tech. I mean, how many how many backroom guys does it take to change a light bulb? We know from experience it takes at least three over a month. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brock, I, I don't know if the camera can pan down to this, but if you look by Seton's feet, there's a chip out of the wood floor that's about, I would guess, like 10 inches long. It happened last week. I mentioned to the guys in the back room that this should be fixed in some fashion probably four times over the past four days, and it's still sitting exactly where it was the other day. It'll oh. take at least a month. <laughs> mm. Oh, let's not That's fix not that. That's not dangerous at all. No. Hopefully an accident will happen. From that. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Coming up, the boss keeps his word, but a trip to the Big Apple ain't happening. Sorry. Stay with us. Martinez to Clifford, feeds it right side to Foley with a shot, save, rebound, SCORE! Alec Martinez has won the Stanley Cup for the Los Angeles Kings! And royalty reigns again in the NHL! Welcome back to the box score. Seaton, when you saw that goal happen on Friday night, did that ruin your weekend in any way, knowing that you wouldn't be going to Game 6 at MSG? No, no, it didn't ruin my weekend. I was bummed, but it was such an exciting finish. Um, and then, of course, I immediately got into a bunch of arguments on Twitter from everybody uh, making fun of me. So, no, it, it was all right. I'm bummed, though. I, I would have liked to have gone to the game, but it is what it is. Right, and the, uh, the boss is a man of his word, and he made sure you knew that he came through. Did I promise you something, Seton? Oh, don't be... <laughs> What? <laughs> what do you got there? I, I promised tickets oh, to Game Six. To are you seriously handing him tickets to a game that doesn't exist? You did promise him to get tickets to Game Six. I actually got four tickets, all the Danettes. So are you, you overdid me? it. You are truly uh, a man of your word. Me. We would we'd be going to Madison Square Garden. We would be going to Game to Six. Game six. Yeah, I, that, that, I thought that was all weak, mean-spirited. A couple of NBC interns had to schlep all the way up, um, all the way across Connecticut here to, to bring these tickets in. I was really excited for Seton and Dan to have an opportunity. Seton has never been to an NHL game before, and it would have been game six at Madison Square Garden, a couple of victories away from holding up the cup. And then when we find out that there was tickets actually for all of us, which made it even worse, that uh, the surprise, I guess, that we were all, there was going to be enough seats for okay. us all. First of all, the there were no tickets for everybody, right? Dan couldn't get tickets to game four, and now all of a sudden <laughs> he has four tickets to game six. So the only reason that he had those four tickets was because the game didn't actually exist. They were useless. He probably couldn't have gotten us 400 tickets to the game. It didn't matter. So he was at, and I, I don't understand how all of a sudden this is becoming like a joke on me. Like, I didn't ask for those tickets. I won them. He pulled my name out of a hat. Now all of a sudden he's like, yeah, I'm really getting you. I'm like, you're the one who couldn't get the tickets. What? Is, I couldn't do anything. McLovin, if there was a game six tonight, would you and Fritzy have been able to attend? Oh my God, I would have been easiest by far for me to attend. It's a hop, skip, and a jump away from my apartment. I was thrilled about the idea of going. Now the other guys, 
I was imagining the logistical challenges. Basically, Seton and Todd would have had to sleep together on a couch <laughs> in that back room. We would have made it work. I, I, I can't see any of us turning down Game Six, Madison Square Garden. So you would have gone. I would have definitely gone. Stanley Where would Cup you have final. slept? Uh, I probably would have had a crash here and snuggled up with Seton and, uh, and you know. I'm good with. And uh, wow, so Seton, you're a double loser. Now you're not going to go to the game. You didn't get to sleep with Todd. And, shorts, and, and rocking the shorts with no underwear, so that would have been a really. Well, the game game. may be out, but the rest might be on. <laughs> the Seton Twitter was piling on, but what does your buddy right next to you think about you not being able to go? I thought Paul was particularly tickled today at the um, oh. ticket bid, which I thought was very mean spirited. And well, it, yeah. it's par for the course for Paul, but I could tell just the joy that I'm not getting to go to this game. He was like, ha, 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 this is the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> I'm not going to say you're wrong. Now, here's the wow. thing. In the moment, I usually revel in the most fortunate of others, and when Seton couldn't go to the game, I did feel bad. I hate that. I, I would love to see someone I know go to game six. That being said, once that was He's out, dying. once the Kings won, I'm still going to make fun of anyone or pile on anyone who loses something in such a painful fashion because that's what I do for a living. So I, even though I felt bad in the moment as a sports guy who wants to see him go, after it's over, I was going to make sure those tickets got in the building somehow. <laughs> there also isn't going to be a game six in the NBA Finals, and Charles Barkley joined the show today to clear up some comments he made about certain Spurs fans. Did you really think that the San Antonio women were, well, Heavy. No, man. I, you know what? Listen, man. I, listen. They got the best coach in the NBA. They got the best point guard in the NBA. They got the greatest power forward ever. Kawhi Leonard is a stud. But they got some big old women there. <laughs> two, two words. They, they, they got great fans, but they do have some big old women there. Two things. Dan did the smart thing and just kind of giggled uh, mm -hmm. uncomfortably and didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm always fascinated by guys who are severely overweight who make fun of the size of women. That's that's a gutsy move. <laughs> I, I love that Charles speaks his mind, but not uh, so veiled uh, <laughs> reference there. Yeah, he he, uh, he had a chance to distance himself from that, but uh, <laughs> he he's a man of his word. He stood by the uh, big old oh, wow. women comment. Whew. Big old Hopefully. women down there. Uh, coming up, the mock headline championship belt is up for grabs. Who wants it? It all goes down after this. Welcome back to the box score. It's Monday, guys. Time to dive into another helping of headline making news from around the nation. Let's battle for the belt in another edition of Mark Headline Battle Royale. I give you a headline, you give me a mock headline. First headline, the LA Kings win in double overtime to capture the Stanley Cup. Let's start with the back row, McLovin. How about Kings for a day? Hockey takes center stage until everyone forgets about them after the NBA Finals. <laughs> That's just true. Front row balling. Kopitar and feathered, Kings crush the Rangers. Oh, snap. Oh. Truth. Fritzy, what do you got? I got uh, cup check, don't dowdy the Kings. Okay, right back to the crotch. And finally, Seton, your mock headline. Royally screwed how the world continues to conspire against me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the pain. Second headline, Martin Keimer cruises to a U.S. Open win. Front row, Polly. You to German, Keimer wins a U.S. Open. Da, Fritzy. <laughs> Keimer Soze, an unusual suspect, wins open. <laughs> See? Mine makes absolutely no sense. Pine hurts. Martin goes one on two. <laughs> the crowd turns on really that. And finally, McLovin. Uh, wake me up when America is good at something again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <got applause>. <laughs> Our third headline. The American. Oh my goodness. Kendall Jenner shows up at the Much Music Awards with not much underwear. I gotta go to Fritzy on this one. Blunderwear. Put on some panties, Kendall. <laughs> blunder, blunder. Seaton, you're next. Kendall Jenner seems like a nice young lady. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and take a pass on this one. McLovin, <laughs> what do you got? Put a sweater on her, she's just 18. I'm with C. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and Polly. Well, maybe Fritzy will take some of his own advice and wear underwear for the future shows. Uh, Decatha Leet Her Alone. Oh, a reference to oh, that. Yeah, oh, what a job he's doing. Okay. Yeah. Finally, our last headline, the Spurs down the heat and win the NBA championship. Let's go to uh, McLovin. Okay, all I got is boring. <laughs> <laughs> Front row, let's go to Pauly. D how did that happen? And the crowd, there we are. Uh, Fritzy, what do you got? Antonio Banderas, why must you be so boringly great? Uh, okay, I like it. <laughs> and finally, Seaton. My Antonio Banderas. Oh, <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> uh, the mock headline championship belt goes to Polly in the front row. Hey, all right, Pauly. Out of order, kid. Let's say that, kid. Little big old man. Oh, coming up, Reggie Miller gives Fritzy a run for his money. <laughs> Give me a little Michael Jackson on the way out. What's your go-to? She's just a girl who claims that I am the one. But the kid is not my son. <laughs> Welcome back to the box score. Fritzy Reggie putting on a show there with his best Michael Jackson impression. Do you have something in your arsenal you want to fire back at Reggie with? They told him never come around here. Don't want to see your face, you better disappear. The in their eyes and their words are really clear so fade it but you want to be bad just be that no one wants to be defeated well done sir well done <laughs> reggie also shared uh, his thoughts on the sad news that broke late this morning as hall of famer tony gwynn passed away Polly, tell us how you found out and the process a producer goes through to confirm a story like this yeah, Brock, on Twitter, I saw a few people without any sources saying uh, they were, they're hearing that Tony Gwynn passed away. So I texted a guy named Darren Smith, who used to produce this show, and he works for the Padres. And he said, yes, I'm hearing the same thing, and that's not good enough. And then Fritzy got a hold of a PR person with the San Diego Padres and said, yes or no, is this true? He said yes on the record, so we were able to go with it. Yeah, Paul, and rightfully so, wanted to be extra careful, especially with news like that. You don't want to uh, be, uh, you know, prematurely talk about like a legendary or any person dying if they, you know, if they were not absolutely sure. And then we were able to uh, reach someone in media relations, and they, they, they confirmed it with us. And then, uh, obviously, Paulie gave uh, Dan the heads up, and we were comfortable actually uh, reporting it on the air that that's what happened. Uh, Fritzy, who's on tomorrow? Anyone to talk about the uh, Tony Gwynn death? Uh, we're working on some stuff. Uh, we may hear from John Barry also to talk uh, NBA free agency, who may go where, look a little ahead to next week's uh, NBA draft. Uh, so uh, we'll see what uh, what's cooking for tomorrow. I appreciate it, guys. Sad news, a legend. Uh, thanks for watching the box score. Set your DVR or tune in weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, only on Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey, thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!